Station. This is Houston on Space to Ground 2. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, ready for the event. And Houston, ready, ready for, for the event. event. European Space Agency, this is Mission European Control Space Houston. Agency, Houston. Please call Mission Station Control for a voice Houston. check. from Palazzo Chigi in Rome. How do you hear me? Palazzo Chigi, Rome, this is Space Station. We hear you loud and clear. Palazzo Chigi, Rome. Give now the word to the Prime Minister Gentiloni. Uh, grazie, grazie a Paolo Nespoli. Anche noi lo, lo sentiamo forte e chiaro. E lo vediamo anche, quindi vediamo eh, Paolo Nespoli eh, in, un, in un ambiente eh, nella stazione spaziale e credo che lui non ci veda, quindi eh, gli descrivo brevemente eh, dove siamo. Siamo eh, nella sala cosiddetta dei mappamondi a Palazzo Chigi, ci sono dei mappamondi attorno a noi. Oltre ai mappamondi ci sono il presidente dell'ASI Battiston, l'ingegnere ongaro dell'ESA, il mio consigliere militare che ci viene a ricordare, il generale Masiello, che viene dai paracadutisti, credo come un tempo anche Paolo Nespoli. L'Italia è molto orgogliosa naturalmente della missione e del ruolo di Nespoli per il ruolo che Nespoli sta giocando. Uh, we, uh, I have the duty to remind you that uh, this morning I went to the University of Camerino, which is a small town that was uh, struck by the earthquake, to inaugurate the academic year, and they gave me the following words uh, from Paolo Nespoli, which were addressed to the students a few weeks or actually a few months ago. And I wanted to ask him, to Paolo Nespoli, uh, before everything else, a very ordinary question which you've also been asked uh, tens of times, how do you organize the day uh, of an astronaut, given that uh, the time is very different from hours or schedules? What do you see from the window at this moment? What time is it uh, where you are and when do you go to sleep? In other words, if you tell us a little bit the day, uh, today's day for Paolo Nesto, uh, Nespoli. Buongiorno, signor Presidente, è un uh, piacere averla uh, qui sulla Stazione Spaziale Internazionale, avere sostanzialmente tutta l'Italia. Uh, saluto il Presidente dell'Agenzia Spaziale Italiana, il Professor Battiston, che ringrazio ancora per avermi assegnato a questa missione. Saluto l'Ingegnere Franco Ongaro, collega e amico dell'Agenzia Spaziale Europea, un direttore dell'Agenzia Spaziale Europea, un amico e direttore dell'Agenzia Spaziale Europea space station, who also carries high the Italian flag. And Mr. Masiello, I also greet. I, I remember very well uh, from the uh, good old times together. The space station is a uh, out of the world uh, environment. We are a place that's outside of the world. We are human beings who are projected into the outside. It seems like an odd, uh, it seems like an incredible thing uh, to be up here. Everything is an artificial environment. I was working with one of these models and I had to lower and I noticed while I was beating against the uh, uh, walls between me and the universe, there's only three millimeters of aluminum. There's all, but however, it's very precious three millimeters of uh, aluminum because uh, this uh, module uh, was built in, it, in Italy and what brought us to work to be able to give our important contribution to this, which is a, uh, an effort by the humanity to go beyond. Our day, I should say, is pretty full. In fact, it's extremely full. We have uh, the Houston Control Center from Munich, from Moscow, from uh, Zuku Tsukuba in Japan, which give all of the uh, requirements for the uh, planning team. And this, uh, these planners have the task of uh, putting as many things as possible, cram them into the 
the day so that people here at the International Space Station can work without running into each other using the resources that are available to us. And it is a rather complex work. For example, we receive uh, a timeline, a daily uh, timeline. And so to be a good astronaut, you have to be able to follow only that what they tell you to do, because if you do exactly what they tell you to do within the time frame they give you, then everything works well. But if the problem arises, then things begin to uh, go a little bit uh, uh, askew, and that requires a lot more work to make things work. Uh, our day uh, is past, uh, I would say, about 50, 60 percent of our time in uh, scientific activities or technological activities, and so uh, activities involved uh, in uh, using the space station. For the rest of the time, maybe 40 percent of the time, we have to maintain this uh, uh, housing at the laboratory home of ours because, I don't know, we have to uh, unload the, uh, uh, the uh, vehicles that uh, bring us uh, activity. We have to do maintenance work. We have to clean the filters. We have to discharge uh, uh, garbage. So the entire day uh, runs along in a rather strange or bizarre way. And so you find yourself uh, working with uh, a scientific uh, a scientist who's working at the limits of current technology. And then uh, the next moment you have to turn around and repair, I don't know what, the uh, the toilet or the bath, uh, which doesn't uh, work. So you have to do, uh, you have to work as a uh, plumber or an electrician. Uh, here, the time passes sort of strange way. We don't have any out, uh, external reference points unless we go to the window, to the cupola, which is another Italian jewel. The problem is that uh, turning uh, as at our orbital speed around Earth, we have a uh, dawn and a sunset every 45 minutes. And so at the end, we have the equivalent of 16 days, 16 uh, dawns, 16 desks in a single day, and so you completely lose the sense of time. It happens to me in the evening when uh, I am, uh, have to, say, uh, go to the cupola to take some photographs, and there's noonday sun. It seems strange to me, but it uh, changes your sensations of time. That's uh, it's no accident that I have two uh, watches on me. One is 24 hours, not 12, because here it's uh, not easy to know whether it's 11 o'clock in the morning or 11 in the evening. And so the situation is a little bit complex, but this helps us understand. It makes us uh, understand how time and effect, time measures and perception of time is an extremely subjective thing and not objective thing, the understanding of time. Well, it's very um, interesting, this uh, particular mix between uh, very high-level work of a scientific nature and domestic work, which you do which the astronaut does in order to, uh, through a variety of uh, ways in the, aboard the space station. And another uh, curious thing that I wanted to ask you about of uh, Paolo Nespoli is how are the uh, relations within the space station, within the team that works on the space station, I believe that Paolo Nespoli is a representative, a European representative among Russians and Americans. And it seems to me that the space station, from this point of view, is a place that is very privileged in terms of uh, relationships among the various countries, which in some way uh, enables uh, you to remain uh, beyond and very far from normal uh, geopolitical tensions. The political tensions, of course, uh, happen even aboard, or do they uh, also happen aboard the space station, these geopolitical tensions? It's true the space station has several, uh, seven, uh, rather six team members, two Russians, three Americans, and one uh, European representative from the European Space Agency, an Italian in this particular case. It is a place in which, uh, which is confined and isolated, a place in which I can say, well, in the evening, I'm not going to go out and take a, a walk or go out and have a pizza with friends. Uh, you are forcibly here. And we are forcibly uh, uh, dividing uh, per force. It restricts the space with five other people. During these days, we are uh, 
there was a, a joke. How do you say something that we joke about or laugh about? It happens once in a while that we're different modules, but in some particular reason, perhaps we might have all four of us in one corner, one on top of the other. And so we laugh and joke about, come on, everybody in the left uh, corner to see what happens. And it's a strange thing that we have been able to succeed and turn into a joke when we have to be crowded together because, to be sincere, it could be very irritating when you're trying to do something and here's somebody else who touches what you're doing and it flies away, you don't find it again, or maybe he moves a computer away on which you had uh, uh, put things that you have to look at. And so it's a, can, it's a cohabitation that's uh, very interesting, as you might think, like uh, with married couples. It's the sort of marriage that is managed with attention. We have the good fortune to be to have uh, trained together. We have the good fortune to have done specific training uh, together. I remember, for example, one of the particular training uh, that we did in a uh, cavern in, on the island of Sardinia to simulate these strange situations. And these simulations, they put us under stressful situations involving physical difficulties, uh, involving even uh, scary situations, so that uh, your social screens, your own defenses uh, fall away and your aggressive side comes out, which are normally hidden within you. And so we've been able to train in this way uh, and with so we know that or at least we try to measure and verify our behavior and the behavior of others which is a very important thing that we're always doing we're always getting and giving feedback when we see somebody who's a little bit stressed who's behaving slightly strange or different before he understands it we uh, evidence that to him so that uh, because if things if you can stop things at the beginning it's much easier to do that than once they've progressed for example, as I always tell everybody, tell me if I'm doing something strange because I want to know it. I cannot correct what I don't know or understand about myself. It's also important, uh, the point that you made, this is on the station, we have uh, a place that on Earth, uh, among nations that are not very friendly in a geopolitical or political sense or economic sense, but in the space for this mission uh, are the human uh, species outside of the Earth, researching and conquesting it, well, in any case, exploring the universe. These nations have decided to put aside the differences and instead to utilize these differences by bringing them together so that the result of all of these little differences of this uh, comes into a singular identity that is greater and goes beyond what each single nation can bring or each single uh, person or, or agency can express. And perhaps this is the, re the biggest result, greatest result so far of the International Space Station. It's helped us to see that when we want to, we can work together as human beings for something that brings us outside and above every, everything or all difficulties. Well, it goes without saying, I think this is an important, very important value uh, for the adventure uh, in space and the research in space uh, at a distance uh, from which you see the Earth. It makes you makes it even more evident that we are all a part of humanity, that we are all uh, human beings uh, who inhabit the Earth. The method uh, employed in the space station could be of some help to all of us from many points of view. Another uh, thing that I wanted to know about uh, and to address it to Paolo Nespoli, knowing that he has a great deal of experience, all of the projects on which you're working and that one half of your day that is dedicated to scientific work, they all certainly have a fallout, a important fallout on uh, medical research, uh, engineering research, materials research uh, on Earth. Is it, is it possible to describe uh, some of these projects because they have an, um, they have an interest that uh, to us uh, ordinary citizens can understand uh, in terms of their relevance. What are some of the interesting examples of these projects that perhaps uh, you can describe to us? 
Mr. President, this is the question that I often uh, ask and I'm very happy to respond to. Sincerely, I find it somewhat difficult to respond uh, exactly to such question. Here we have uh, about 300 experiments in the space station. The question is, which is the best, which is the most interesting, which is the one that gives the best results? And that's not so hard to, not so easy to, under, to respond to, because most of the experiments have to do with basic uh, things, with basic knowledge, things that for me also is difficult to understand. Rarely do they have an immediate use uh, of practical, in a practical sense, because they have to do with expanding our knowledge, uh, to try to understand how things work, to try to understand and to use this uh, uh, gravity-free environment in order to be able to do things that cannot be done, cannot be done on Earth. And I don't know examples that uh, come to mind. For example, uh, there's been a development of a uh, vaccine against salmonella, which was developed in space because this uh, extraterrestrial environment uh, causes viruses to become much more virulent, and so we are able to see them more clearly and to work with these viruses, for example. But there are so many applications that slowly, little by little, it's hard to say little by little, but they arrive and they enter into the life, uh, or, uh, daily lives, for example, uh, lubricants that behave differently. There are, it's really hard for me to understand exactly to these questions in a precise manner. Something that I always tell students is that, uh, or to kids, young people, uh, who are very able in doing uh, web research, they can go to the city web of NASA, the uh, European Space Station, or Space Agency, and also the Italian uh, Space Station on these sites that contain uh, complex and simple examples of what we do, things that have been seen and done in space and then which have arrived back to Earth. For, in fact, this uh, space mission uh, on the International Space Station is not something that is uh, uh, only for its own sake. We're not here just to do this. We're here to work outside of Earth, but for Earth, and this is what we do every day. One last um, question uh, on my part to Paolo Naspoli is, um, I'm not sure if there's a conflict of interests, but I'm curious about your opinion regarding space activities, commercial space activity, space tourism, so to speak. A gentleman of my age who is not prepared uh, scientifically nor physically, as Paolo Nespoli would be, uh, who's uh, in the future will such a person some year to be able to go into space uh, through space tourism. I am convinced that absolutely yes because uh, after having been in space, I understand and I believe that there are at least a couple of things, unique things that this environment allows you to do which are worth doing and make this trip worthwhile. And those are the sense of gravity, the uh, ability to turn over within this, uh, to overcome this gravity that keeps you tied to the, uh, into your chair or on, uh, on the ground. Uh, instead to be able to become sort of like a Spider-Man who can do and uh, lift things that are very heavy. It gives you an incredible sense of freedom. And then there's the capacity of being able to observe Earth from here, to see this planet in a completely different way, and to extract yourself from the reality or the atomic uh, everyday uh, reality. I tell kids always uh, to be on Earth is to pretend to look at a uh, uh, painting with your nose right against the canvas. You don't see it. What can you see? Maybe the pupil of uh, Mona Lisa, maybe just a little tooth. But if you want to see this image, you've got to pull away from the painting to be able to understand what it really means. And the vision of Earth is something that is really incredible. I would say that all of those who will come here 
They will have the, uh, the knowledge of having been uh, improved earthlings, and these things will make us become, uh, this will make it become a place that everybody wants to go to, given the possibilities for commerce, for commercial activities that will bring us here a little bit uh, today. It's a little bit like you take the plane if you want to go to New York or to Maldive Islands or somewhere else on vacation to seek out something that you don't find at home. I'm convinced this will happen in the future. I don't see any conflict. I do not see any conflict with the activities that we're doing today. The governments must do that which is uh, uh, that private persons cannot do. But at the moment, the private agencies can come to space and to have their own vehicles. The governments will then have to concentrate on, I don't know, go out to, to Mars, go beyond to do things that are remain impossible to the private sector. I hope. Uh, with concern, consideration of your question, somebody a little bit older without the training of an astronaut, whether such a person go to Spain, my answer is absolutely yes. I believe in this regard in a few years that there will be the possibility. Uh, in fact, it already has happened, even for me to be able to buy a, a ticket and come back to space and to experience again this joy of being free of gravity, to be able to look at the Earth and no longer to be attached to a timeline for daily activities that follow you on a daily basis, but simply be here to enjoy this place which is really out of this world. Thank you. And certainly this will be helping us to be more uh, human. Thank you, Paolo Nespoli. Mr. President Gentiloni, I thank you for having been with me for us here at the space station, the International Space Station, and I thank the uh, uh, President of the Italian Agency, Batistan, and the uh, Este Director, General Maziello. I thank all of you. I thank Italy for having and for continuing to participate in these projects, which are extremely complex but extremely important. All together, we can go beyond and continue in this manner. Thank you. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from the European Space Agency. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Thank you.